going on everybody welcome back to another very special episode of the vile files i'm your host nick we have the team amanda ally and uh amanda is that your name i almost forgot it for a second i'm just kidding <laughs> my name's chrissy I like to, though in I like case you're wondering i don't have amanda energy <laughs> oh, okay no i get tripped up because i think sometimes i say amanda and ally and i decided to switch it up and then i got confused also, I'm just really excited for our, our guest this episode. Uh, you know her, you love her, the Bachelorette. Katie Thurston's with us tonight. <laughs> Before we get to Katie's, uh, truly, you won't want to miss an interview. Uh, just a couple quick reminders. Sending your questions to asknick at castmedia.com, cast with a K, for Ask Nick episodes. Uh, if you are tuning in for the Katie episode, we do some really fantastic things on Mondays where people write in and share their uh, dating stories, dating problems, just general questions. We give some insight and opinions. People seem to like it. Um, and if you want to check that out or are interested in anything like that, give us a listen because uh, I know many of you are probably just here to listen to Katie. So uh, we also next week have uh, Billy Boyd and Dominic N Monaghan, just nailing names. You know him from Lord of the Rings and many other amazing movies. Just uh, a couple of fun-loving guys who value their friendship, and we talk about friendship, and they're just really interesting and fascinated to have so many different takes on, on life. So check that out. I think I think we covered it. Did I cover it? Do we have it? Are we yeah. good? Great. Well, let's get to Katie. Katie, thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers. I uh, appreciate you coming. Uh, you just, uh, for those of you uh, listening... Uh, you just got to L.A. from Seattle? Texas, actually. Visiting family over there. Uh, what, yeah, what were you doing in Texas? Visiting just, family? Yeah, like a quick weekend. What part of Texas? Ooh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Uh, New Braunfels? Ooh, sorry, guys, if you're from there. Uh, is that a large town, mm, city? I don't know. I know nothing about Texas. It's my first time. Oh, it was your first time? Yeah. Oh, what made you go this time? Family. I know that, but did they just move there? Uh, yeah, my my cousin works for Tesla, so Tesla's oh. just moved in over oh, Tesla in Austin. Yeah. Okay. What what do they do there? She's like high up. She's a big deal. Okay. Yeah, Elon. I could probably meet him. I I saw him at a party once. <gasps> What's yeah. he like? It was at the end of the night. I didn't. I try not to like make strong eye contact. He seemed <laughs> nice. He was talking to other people. I didn't. I didn't stay along to observe him or i did not also meet him it was a very large party mm. uh, it wasn't like an intimate setting anyway enough about <laughs> elon musk uh i'm so excited to have you uh i've been looking forward to chatting with you obviously we met uh when i showed up uh while filming and it was that lovely to meet you then uh, i as a fan uh and as someone who's been in your shoes i i want to say I, I really think you're doing great at, at being the bachelorette uh again as a fan thank you it's a very entertaining season so far uh you're a big <laughs> reason why you know having the conversations being honest with your thoughts your feelings uh as someone who's been in your shoes i i, I can tell the things that have been thrown at you and oh, the yeah. adversity <laughs> you've been asked to face you know there's no denying that as a lead of the show you are in charge partly of of making the tv show and, and that comes sometimes at a, a at a price and sometimes you know uh, you have to do a job all while simultaneously trying so hard to make it the most authentic experience possible. And uh, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, a task that people don't really uh, realize, I think. It's tough. Yeah, and, and rightfully so. It's, it's a really bizarre experience that you, you can't really put into words. I've told this story before, but I've had other leads before I was a bachelor being like, you just don't have any idea what it's like. And I was the guy who was like the two time runner up. And I'm like, well, you have no idea what I've been through. And then, and then I, when I was a bachelor, uh, I was like, fuck yeah, they, they weren't kidding. It's a really challenging experience. Um, with all that said, I have some questions about tonight's episode. Let's hear it. Um, so one thing I know that I've experienced and I've talked to friends of mine who have been in our position as well is that you almost are surprised even though you know it that when you watch their season back there's so much you get to see for the first time do you relate to that experience oh yeah like Andrew and Trey going at it I had no idea that was going on like I 
think very highly of both of them. And to see them kind of disagreeing was kind of a, a shock this episode. Really? Mm-hmm. Was there anything else? I mean, it's tough because there's like so much that isn't seen that I know that I experienced, like especially with Thomas, for sure. example. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's interesting to see like the guys like interact when I'm not around and to get to watch that for the first time, honestly. So that was my question. I'm glad you brought up Thomas because mm-hmm. as you know, as someone who got to meet Thomas, uh, first time, and I've said this in the on, uh, recap episodes, when I met Thomas, I just got a vibe from him. And, and that vibe was like, I don't really know this guy. I don't know if he's good or bad. And I'm sure he's an all right guy, but I don't believe what he's saying. And because for me, it just came across as a guy who it was too intense for that little of a time there. And it, I, you know, I knew that he didn't have a one-on-one yet, right? So I was like, where is this coming from? And like, I know that world and Thomas wouldn't be the first guy who's fall victim to that kind of just kind of saying things that sound nice. And so you know that I thought that. I Before I left, it was just like, hey, just listen to, you know, Thomas. <laughs> so I I was there, right? Yeah. Now, after watching this episode and seeing how all the guys uh, took what Thomas said, and again, I'm there with Thomas definitely comes across as a bullshitter. <laughs> uh, but I, it felt like throughout the entire episode, you got lied to uh, by the guys. And maybe... Their intentions were still well and et cetera, et cetera. But were there things, so from my opinion watching it, it seemed like either one of two things. Either you got lied to and then like Caitlin and, and, and Tasha came up and kind of gassed you up as well. I mean, like, this is bullshit. Like, <laughs> you come here to be The Bachelor. Like, well, whatever. Or there were things that we didn't get to see that Thomas did or said that we just weren't aware of that also led to Thomas's unceremoniously, unceremoniously? <laughs> am I saying that right? Exit. And I'm, yeah. my question to you is, which one is it? I mean, there's only so much you can show in like a two hour episode, right? And one thing that I wish was shown that was kind of like the nail in the coffin for me was um, Thomas actually came forward and said that he was kind of mean to Trey. And Trey is like the most kind hearted man, you know? And so like once I heard that, I was like, if you can't handle like conversations, I've already experienced it firsthand. Like you aren't able to communicate like in a normal, effective way. Now you're being mean to Trey, who's like a sweetheart. Like, I don't have time for you, you know? And I wasn't gonna waste any time with him. Like, yeah, he's hot. And I, I really was hoping to be honest, I'll take him to fantasy suites, <laughs> you know? But like, I don't have time to waste. And so I was like, you gotta go. Okay. Was any of that meanness, that was a meanness to Trey wasn't shown. Uh, Correct. Yeah. But um, it was talked about by Thomas himself. He admitted to it. So there was a confrontation between Trey and Thomas that at least your understanding that Thomas talked to Trey in a way that was scary or like bad. Yeah. That's why like in my speech, I'm like, you're unkind, you know, and that's why. Okay. That because I'll be honest in my recap, I it I was just like, where's unkind coming from? Is there something we're not seeing or she's been told this now so and trey told you this and 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 thomas admitted to it no thomas just trey never brought it up oh you know but i do want to give him credit for coming forward you know um but he did kind of keep that to himself thomas was the one who admitted it he was just spilling like words after words after words like that conversation was. did you confirm anything with trey though i didn't care to honestly like with thomas i was just over it i did not care to i don't have time to waste you know and that's the thing i'm gonna make quick decisions and if all of a sudden like there's no guys left that's not on me that's on like casting you know if you're gonna Uh, bring (laughs) shitty guys here that's not on my my end cheers (laughs) cheers cheers to that I just want to point out that all the women on my season were wonderful people and I couldn't be more thankful that they showed up. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste time with these like shitty guys. Like, bye, get out. Okay. Okay. I love that. Uh Trey did lie to you. I uh, what when? <laughs> he said, and this is what I air was aired. Yeah. That Thomas admitted to showing up to be the bachelor. Mm. And Thomas said, when asked multiple times by Hunter and the guys, like, did you, th- let me ask, did you think about being, a-? and now he was like, and Thomas was like, 
Yeah, I don't know. I thought about like the possibility of being the bachelor. And I'm here to say, like, we all have. Like the consider like, oh, I mean, it'd be crazy, right? But like, what if? That'd be nuts. I mean, of course not. That's crazy. But and so it just felt like, again, Thomas totally sounds like he's full of shit. But I my question to you is this like, I don't believe again, who who am I to say? But I when I left there, I was like, I don't I don't see it. I know she has the hots for Thomas, but I just I Katie's smart. I just don't see I don't really see a connection. So I don't think you're going to end up with Thomas, but you're still glad he went home this week rather than like taking the fantasy suite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, here's the thing. Yeah, of course, everyone thinks like if I don't fall in love, there is an opportunity to become the bachelor or the bachelorette. But the way that Thomas um, conveyed it to me, to the house, it almost seemed like he came in wanting to be the bachelor, the bachelor first. Okay. And that was where it was like, okay, you weren't even open to like falling in love. You're just like, let's skip that step and become the bachelor. And that's the difference I think that people are kind of missing with how he kind of explained himself. Okay, I got you. And again, I, I definitely saw that. I, I What I hated for me as a fan, I, I, I thought Andrew had – arguably the best single night performance in the history of the show. Just like I, I wasn't, it wasn't about whether I agreed with Thomas or not. I just love that Andrew made it very clear that he believed in you and he trusted you and all these other guys had a bunch of like shit to say. And, but at the end of the day, all I heard is I don't think Katie's going to ask enough questions to figure out Thomas. That's what I heard from them. And I heard from Andrew is I know Katie's going to ask the right questions and figure Thomas out. And I just didn't like that. And do you feel the same or no? It's tough because I feel like Trey and Andrew S. both had good uh, arguments for the situation. What really annoyed me, though, was the um, evening before the rose ceremony. It was like I was I was pretty much made up. I was like, I don't need you guys' input anymore. But then every single guy felt the need to like bring him up. And I'm like, I'm just done talking about him. Okay. All right. So we're moving on from Thomas. You're you're happy, no regrets. I mean, sometimes people watch the show and are like, "Oh fuck, man!" Like, I didn't know that happened. And <laughs> and sometimes it changes their point. But I just want to you you are. I feel thinking, s- looking forward, thinking forward. I feel good about it. Let's get drunk and also <laughs> take care of your body. No, I mean, hey, everyone loves the spirit. We like to get loose. It's summertime. We like our. Seltzers are hard seltzers, you know, a little bit of alcohol, but now you can do it all while taking care of yourself by providing the antioxidants, vitamin C that your body needs, all while having a good time. And you can do it with Vizzy. That's right. Vizzy is more than just a hard seltzer with antioxidant vitamin C. Vizzy celebrates inclusion. There are plenty of hard seltzers to choose from, but with its bold and delicious dual fruit flavors, antioxidant vitamin C, it makes the choice a little, little easier. Plus, Vizzy is a great supporter of the LGBTQ plus community and they have donated over $1 million to the human rights campaign over three years. Vizzy now has a lemon hard seltzer and four delicious flavors, watermelon, peach, raspberry, and strawberry with the same antioxidant vitamin C. I absolutely love the lemonade hard seltzer watermelon flavor because it's delicious. Upgrade your hard seltzer with Vizzy to find out where you can purchase Vizzy limited edition pride packaging or any other refreshing flavors, go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash V-I-A-L-L. To get updates on your latest flavor drops and more, sign up for your emails at VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. Must be 21 years or older. Do you care, want, or think it's a bad idea for Thomas to show up on Paradise? Oh, I am nervous for any woman who interacts with Thomas, honestly. Okay. He's a he's a smooth talker. Wow. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he like recycles some lines with me on some of these women. Well, I can assure you, if he does, <laughs> we will all find out. <laughs> Yes. Uh, In slow motion, probably. Good luck There's to probably them. an ex-girlfriend at home who's like, yeah, I got that line. <laughs> <laughs> so you, okay, there's, you you have no, like, maybe, maybe there's just a side of Thomas. I, I, I Maybe that situation brought out the worst in Thomas and maybe. I don't know. Here's some, here's where I just, I, I and again, I agree with you because do, I, I, you're a fan of the franchise. You've yeah. been watching this show. Mm-hmm. When I was on Andy season, watching this episode back, specifically this episode, I was I it reminded me of being on Andy season. It remind like instead of the word manipulative, it was strategic. 
And it was like, oh, Nick's so strategic. And it was just like the fucking guys just like ran with like the thought that I used my brain. And like, I was like, oh, you got her flowers, you <laughs> evil fuck. And these guys leaving the season, leaving that world, thought, Nick, Nick, I wouldn't trust Nick. I wouldn't trust him. I mean, for like months after that season ended until I like, met like hung out because a lot of times you don't hang out with them and you meet them up and that they had that narrative in their head do you think there's any chance that the guy's perception or your perception of thomas could be that world or are there something about thomas that you just mm -mm, be warned oh look if i wanted to keep thomas i would have my connection with him was i think more sexual than like uh mental emotional he said all the right things but i like i already and i wish they showed it i questioned it very early on it's like no one's this perfect you know and so like my intuition was like i don't know about this guy and the second trey said what he said i was like boom i've been thinking about this for weeks okay but but paradise you're open to him maybe changing your mind and learning or no, no? No, if no, he's on paradise, no, no belief in I don't care who he's with. I'm gonna be like, watch out, girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. You heard it here. I don't know if you heard it here first, but maybe <laughs> we heard you heard it here first. Uh, let's talk about Blake. Mm. Um, when we met for the first time, you briefly mentioned to me that you and Blake, and I just to clarify because there's been some shitty reporting. Uh, <laughs> I said in last week's recap that I was under the impression that there was a handful of DMs between Blake and, and Katie. And watching last night's episode, uh, when you talked to Tasha, uh, well, I guess my question to you is, and you, did you watch Caitlin's season? Yes. Yeah. So are you aware that like, I showed up? Yeah. Late? I mean, we talked about yeah, it. That's the yeah. thing where it gets a little kind of yeah. confusing. Like, there's a lot of similarities between yours yeah. and Caitlin's season so far. Like I know. eerie. <laughs> PTSD Sim for Nick. Eerie similarities. <laughs> but I remember for me, uh, Caitlin and I had talked a ton. We had never met in person, yeah. but there was aggressive faith. Like we were, we were saying some crazy ass shit. It oh, was I've like, heard. you know, <laughs> like it was just going down with like, it was like, what, what the fuck? But nevertheless, so I had this really strong reason I was there. Or truly, like, I, I'm, I was literally there for the right reasons, right? And when I showed up, though, out of fear of probably protecting Caitlin and protecting myself, I acknowledged that we talked. And But it was, I, dared, I downplayed it totally hard, right? Mm -hmm. And when I showed up, a lot of people watching, when I showed up, and they wondered why Caitlin and I had this seemed to be obvious connection and it was like these motherfuckers i don't know what's what's going on why is there a connection i think you know where i'm going with this and when taisha came in starting off uh, and she's like hey you know this person and they're here you seem to light up even then and i know probably then you were already tired you were already emotional just in general i know how it, what that's like but nevertheless you got excited i think some, we've got teary-eyed and my question to you was a did you think it might be blake b did you hope it was blake or or c none of the above <laughs> uh, i mean it could be a and b uh, yeah yeah so they definitely asked me like who do you think it is and honestly my thoughts were actually dr joe or blake those are two that would actually, I think, be like decent matches for me. Oh, okay, Doctor Joe. Yeah, we judge it yeah. on the podcast. Yes, Joe. Yeah, honestly, and like oh, because of God. not to be like shady, but like if it was anyone else, like they would go home on the spot. That's well. That's was my reaction because like, why is she getting so emotional? Because like, for all she knows, it's Yusuf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why did you get so emotional? Because it could have been. Yusuf. I mean, I, I was more emotional, I think, for the connections I had because it's like such a gamble. You know, like if I bring him in, what does this mean for like the, the front runners? You know, you have Greg, you have Michael A, Andrew S, all these people I'm building these connections with. If I bring in Blake, are these people going to just like check out or leave? Like it's you got to like weigh like yeah, no, the good I, and the yeah, bad. I get it. You know, but at that point, you didn't know who is there. So you weren't quite yet faced with that that dilemma. Yeah. So why did you cry? I mean, like I said, like when I watched it, I was crying about more just like the stress of like, do I accept this person or not? You but know? you didn't know he was there yet. Did you know it was Blake? Definitely like, not. And that's okay. the thing. People don't understand. Like 
what all these guys, I call it Klaisha season. I think a lot of people do. What all these guys from Klaisha season do is they message the girl once they get booted off the show and they reach out. And that's all that Blake really did. So I didn't take him seriously as like, yeah, he's just doing the same thing that everyone else is doing, like whatever. Yeah. And that's it? That was, that was it. We're not going to find out like in two years, like Kayla and I were like, all right, it's been two years. We'll fucking tell you. <laughs> no, no. I, I have all the DMs. Like it's very brief. It's very much like I didn't take him seriously. Even... Um, knowing like who he was on TV and social media, I was like, eh, whatever, you know, like it takes for me meeting someone in person and knowing that like actual connection, like when you yeah. feel it, you know, but you seemed, and there was clear chemistry between the two of you. And, and that was the first time you met or did you ever FaceTime? Never FaceTime. Nope. I'll tell you what these guys do is they send videos no. on Instagram. Wait, who? All of them. All of them. All of them. All the girls have can testify. You? Wait, what? Yes. Not just me. All the women from that season. They'll send these videos. Who's with, they? The guys? The guys. All the single guys. From the world or the Bachelorette well, franchise? The franchise in general. They send videos. these videos because then they disappear. So there's no like evidence. You send like the one video uh, of, like, hey, just want to say you did really good on that season. Like, good luck. Oh, you were okay. great. And then like, the video disappears. So there's no evidence. So no offense to Blake, but like he was one of like a bunch of them who had done that to either me or other girls so i was like whatever nothing is like weird they're saying nice job and they're maybe just they're being polite they're they're kind of testing the water yeah they're dipping know? their toes and or, i was not no, i mean that's, again no offense i was not interested that's what i, I mean that's what i did i t sent her a, a, a dm in the tweets but yeah. i was like tell me about uh what's her name it was like a soft open right interesting yeah so blake was one of many i don't mean i don't say like many but like it was just not i wasn't surprised he did that because he wasn't the first he had done that to me. Other guys had done that to me or friends of mine from that season. You said you have the DMs. I do. Can we? Well, they're videos. That's the thing. You send the video and it's you can watch it one time, right? Like oh, it's, so he never sent yeah. any written text. No. I know. Smart. Because I, I, I actually went back. I was like, what did we talk about? Because it was back, I don't know, back in, I think, February was when I was kicked off of Matt's season. And that's when he reached out. Huh. They wait for you to get kicked off because they're like, is she with him so, or she not? Did you send any videos back or was this only a one-way conversation? No, I definitely send it back like, yeah, thanks, whatever. You know, but like... it's Also in a video? Yeah, same thing. But it's also awkward because you're like, hey, never no, talked to you hey, before. Listen, I, <laughs> we, we are a, a technology dating app positive podcast <laughs> and we are open to all ways for people to connecting. There is no judgment yeah. and we won't stand for any of it. <laughs> but I'll say, like, he didn't... He wasn't very obvious with his intentions and we brought that up. Like, when I talked to him, I was like, I didn't even know you were interested in me. Like, he just very casually like tested the waters but didn't try too hard okay and, and I, I wasn't interested i'm still not totally understanding or buying why you got if if you hoped it was blake when you were talking to Tasha. i didn't because hope it was blake i don't know why you were so emotional then i, I feel like you didn't watch the episode because when i watched it i thought i was emotional because i was scared to bring anybody on whether it was but you blake. didn't have to you could have sent anyone home you i mean been, yeah but i wanted to like i don't know i'm i'm like I got Michael, I got Greg, yeah. I got Andrew S. Like, yeah. who knows? A couple. Like, why didn't you just like? I don't know, Tasha. Like, I don't want your. <laughs> your your sloppy <laughs> seconds. <laughs> no, I so just. Why were you emotional? I just wanted to meet who it was. You know, okay. like I said, I my thoughts were like, okay, Doctor Joe Blake. I would probably say okay, maybe, but like, again, no offense to the other guys, but if it was one of them, I'd be like, <laughs> bye, like instantly on the spot. So Blake. Uh, Blake and maybe Dr. Would you have kept Dr. Joe? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And the thing with Blake is like everyone was shipping us like after um, Matt and Clayshia's season. It seems like a fit, I'll say. I said, oh, only because like he made like a, I don't know, like a clay penis or something. And I came with a dildo and like, I'll be honest, like oh, you're a match made in heaven. I'm like, okay. I, I, I don't remember uh, I didn't Blake doing that. Yeah. And uh, I, I relate to people making very broad gen relations and saying you're a perfect fit <laughs> i really empathize with how irritating that can sound yeah. but i i just think just it just there just seems to be like i get it i don't know why and maybe we'll learn more as we watch and i'll totally disagree but uh i i remember when you told me and I, you were like what do you think and i was like fuck yeah why not like yeah. i don't know if you want like it works for me and I, I didn't met any of the other guys at that point but um Interesting. Okay. Well, I think that's the only questions I have specifically about the show uh, so far. Is there anything you want to tease and let us know what uh, we can look forward to before we dive into who is Katie? I think people think they know what my type is and they don't. 
that's I think the biggest surprise as you watch each episode you know people are like ruling out these guys I'm like don't rule them out yet like I'm getting to know them in their hearts and their minds and I'm really giving them a chance I think people are going to see that this season so at this point of the season, it's not as obvious to you as it is to us that you're going to pick Greg. Oh, absolutely not. Like, I was very open. <laughs> it, no, it was, I, honestly, I would, I would ask, stop it. I would ask Caitlin and Tasha. I'm like, when is it that you, like, you know? Like, when does it, like, click? Because, like, I'd be, like, with one guy to, like, he's great. And I'd be with another guy. I'm like, he's also great. Like, when does it click? You know? And that was, like, the biggest fear for me going uh-huh. forward. Really? Mm-hmm. And then you're like, I clicked with Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I'm a pretty good reader of people, and you have a pretty good poker face. It's hard. I can't tell if you're <laughs> just uh, being a savvy bachelorette or totally lying to me. I gotta be smart. Um, As I drink more whiskey. Oh, she's gotta be smart. <laughs> she's got to be smart, not necessarily honest. Mm. Not strategic, mm. smart. <laughs> it's so smart that she picked Greg. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Greg. <laughs> Which it would be like, I, 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 I see it, I get it. And I like again, it was it was Vanessa's to lose the whole time. And even after she tried to lose it multiple times, I was like, fuck, I'm still going to pick you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, you never know how those things go. Um, well, great. Uh, thank you for indulging my hard-hitting questions about uh, the show. Yeah. Uh, it is a great season so far. Uh, and uh, I am excited to see what, what happens. And it sounds like there is, we can confirm there is a th- thing stopped short the season. Or is that oh. just a rumor you have yet to no. been allowed to confirm? No, I'll confirm it. The end gets crazy. Like, it's like not traditional at all. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Okay. That's, all, that's all I'll say. That's all you'll but, say. Okay. Yeah. I don't, like, I, it gets crazy. I don't, I don't want to know spoilers. I enjoy not okay. knowing what happens. Uh, so let's get to know Katie. <laughs> uh, let's start at the beginning. So you're from Seattle. Yeah. And you've you've been a, like a, when did you start watching The Bachelor? Oh, it was um, Ashley and JPJ. No, not JPJ. Oh. Fuck. What's, what's his name? JP. JP. I was close. <laughs> yeah. I haven't met him in person. We, we were like. A Twitter fans. He's been on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, he's coming out in the end of the summer. I look forward to meeting him. I, I yeah. hear a lot of good... Re- and Ashley as well. I haven't met her, but I've heard only yeah. good things. So a long time. That was my first season I ever watched. And yeah. have you watched every season since then? <laughs> no. It's like hit or miss, you know, depending. Like you always start out strong. And you're like... Eh, and you kind of check out a little bit. But... Uh, what are some of your favorite seasons? Obviously, Caitlin. Big fan. Yeah, was a- um, I enjoyed your season, okay. actually. So, so you don't... <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I'm just saying that. Obviously, Caitlin. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy Caitlin. Thanks, uh, yeah, thanks for the pity compliment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, obviously, I think Caitlin's probably stood out the most to me. Um, ben Higgins was probably like my first like bachelor crush for sure. So I enjoyed his season. But, I, t- uh, I talked to Ben today. Yeah, I mean, Says I talked hi. to Ben too. He's happy. He's engaged, whatever. <laughs> um, and then... When did you, if any, ever think about, oh, that'd be fun to see myself on this show? Okay, here's the thing. So when I found out it was Matt, I applied and thought it was like, I don't know, I take it seriously because they want like a video. I'm like, I don't have time to send like an eight minute video via USB and like mail it in, you know? So I just like, I applied, but then like never did anything else. But because I had like a TikTok, which had like a bunch of videos, I think that's what gave them like the bypass of like, oh, you don't have to do a video. We've seen what you're like on video. Mm. And for me, I'm 30 and I am technically like on the older side of like the bachelor world. Sure. So yeah. I just never expected like a call. It was just kind of like, whatever, COVID, let's apply, fuck it. And then I got calls after call after call. I was like, oh my God, this is happening. And at the time you were, I forget what you were doing for work. I was a marketing manager for a bank. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you like, did you like that? I mean, I've been doing banking for 10 years. In marketing? Uh, not in marketing, but just like finance in general. Oh. Different positions. So you started in finance. Yeah. Did you go uh, to college, college? No, I was going to college while working part-time as a teller and then just kind of worked my way up when I took a break from college. And I think that's how it works. You take a break and you just like never go back. And just kind of worked your way up mm-hmm. through their company. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. And did you like it? I loved it. I mean, I never thought I was leaving it. Like, again, this whole thing of, like, where I'm at now is, like, completely unexpected. How did you like being on Matt season? It's tough because I thought I knew what to expect, but then, like, you watch it back and you're like, oh, yeah, I stood no chance. And then, like, going through it myself, I'm like, 
okay to you should have just sent yourself home like I think me and Matt were on like on like on good terms and on good pace you know but the bachelor world is so quick you know and so by the time I had my one-on-one with him in the moment I was like oh we're we're right on track it's fine which is why I was like so blindsided going home but then like going through it watching it back I'm like Katie you stood no chance you stood no chance but so do you regret you regret not sending yourself home versus um, how do you have a problem with how you went home no i mean i'm okay like i wouldn't change anything because i mean i'm a big believer in like everything happens for a reason um and honestly like i'm still almost like absorbing it like it all happened so quickly like i was on matt season and then i have my own season it's just like i haven't like had a, a breath i thought it was great for per, i mean i went because i treat people I, I always tell people on that franchise your best moment is when you get broken up with. People don't think that because it feels embarrassing and you're like, ugh. But that's when everyone's like, oh. Yeah. They deserve better. <laughs> um, and it's, you sometimes forget that. And I think if you would have sent yourself home, maybe Pim would be like, oh, yeah. You know, people want you to be grateful for being there. So, I don't know. Could have totally been different. Yeah. Could have totally been different. Um, so, you applied late in, 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 uh, your 20s early 30s mm -hmm. and so before that you're working at the bank uh, obviously you were very open and vulnerable uh, on the date and we don't i know you talked a lot of it already so don't, thank you for sharing by the way i think yeah. you know sharing those stories bring a lot of great awareness to a topic that's not often talked about um uh, but just like dating in general obviously you know um, other guys like what was your biggest dating struggle um if anything and, and maybe you're just, you're happily single or what were some of the other relationships like that you had and what did you learn from those relationships? Yeah, I think prior I was dating guys where I would kind of compromise my own personality. I wanted to be what they wanted me to be. And I was like, I'll do that. Like, I'll be that. A bit of a chameleon. Yeah, ex exactly. And I'm like, okay, like, let me show you how I can be like the perfect girlfriend, the perfect wife. Like, this is what you need. I'll do it. You know, and, and with that, you build like this resentment and you realize there's not actually a connection. You're just trying to force a connection. And that's what I did for a, a long time, honestly. Hmm. And did you have, how many serious relationships uh, did you, like what was your longest relationship before? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I almost bought a house with a, with a boyfriend. Like you I'm did. a very serious dater. I've never been like casual in the dating world. So you're like a good situationship? Yeah, like mm -hmm. I, I try to date long term and if I don't see you as like husband material, like you're gone. Okay. What happened with the one you almost bought a house with? It's like a long story. I don't know. Like we just weren't a good match. He had some things to work on for himself. People I don't know, love like, hearing these stories. I mean, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but like. Uh, he, no, I'm sure there was. I mean, I don't. I hope if he, <laughs> if he did anything bus, bus throwing over, we don't want to throw him under the bus. But, yeah, yeah. Um, we, just weren't, we weren't meant to be. Is the uh, short answer. Do you really believe in everything happens for a reason? Oh yeah. Like when you think about like the domino effect of one action. I can't imagine like not being with this guy who was a piece of shit, honestly, but like it led me to like where I'm at right at this very moment, you know? Yeah. Can you convince me that everything happens for a reason if I don't believe that? You don't believe that? No. Oh my God. I think, I think everything has an opportunity to work out if you're willing to learn. Interesting. And it's uh, your willingness or lack thereof that will determine your outcome because I you know, let's be honest, there are different degrees of privilege and fortune in this world and uh, everything's different. There are circumstances and I don't think it's necessarily fate that dictates it all. I think there are choices involved. I mean, sure, I get that. Like, I guess, yeah, if you think about it, like maybe you believe in fate, maybe you don't. But I definitely believe like if I was to redo something it would come up with a different outcome completely so like for where i'm at right now i'm very happy with all the good and the bad that has happened in my life no, okay. whether that's fate or like everything happens for reason or like taking opportunity learning whatever i'm very happy with everything that's happened good and bad uh what was the favorite thing an ex-boyfriend ever did for you in a relationship that you bring forward or you want to bring forward i don't know if you're in a relationship now mm -hmm. Um, into your current relationships, you know, speaking of gang, and we talk about like dating is just, yeah. you know, there's always should be a positive takeaway of every relationship because that's, that's it's not for nothing. You know, yeah. you have heartbreak, people like, oh, that was such a waste. And it was, you know, it's not. You learn so much about yourself. And what are some things, if anything, from past relationships, even if it was like, oh, I never want to talk to that person again, <laughs> that taught you about yourself and things you want to carry forward that, that like, that was something we did I want to keep? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I want to keep 
anything from these past relationships. But I think the biggest thing I learned um, and it's made the biggest impact is not changing myself to fit their needs. The last serious relationship I had, he was very, uh, he made fun of me, I think, for like my social media presence. Hmm. You know, I was very like, I'm very social. I like to engage with online. And, you know, he was just like, not about that. And so during the pandemic, I downloaded TikTok like everyone else and kind of started making videos. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to be myself. And that's when I like built this like community of people who are like, I like you. And I realized like, you know, I'm not going to please everybody, but there's a good amount of people that are like, okay with who I am. And that's when I really first started to accept exactly who I am as a woman. And that's when all these great things started to happen. I, I, I love hearing that. <laughs> um, other than your type. Yeah. What are some things that you feel like um, people get wrong about you or mis you know, misunderstand you? Uh, whether it's passionation or even just your life. Like you just always feel like, oh, I, don't know. I don't know why people aren't getting this about me. <laughs> Are there, is there anything? I mean, it's tough because like on Matt's season, they, they really only got to see like a very small portion sure. of me. And so anyone who's like not into me being the bachelor, I actually kind of, I sympathize with, I get it. You don't know who I am. And so with those people, I'm like, just watch these episodes. You'll get to learn more about me. Um, and so that's the thing, like anyone who hasn't watched these episodes and they're still judging, I just encourage them to watch these first couple episodes that have already aired and they'll, they'll see a side of me they didn't get to see on that season. And the people who have seen it do get to know me. And they're like, okay, didn't know this about her. I like this. That's, I can't wait to watch more. What about <laughs> in, like, in life, is there anything? Like for me, sometimes I, depending on how I act or I can be aloof, I can be introverted. Yeah. And as someone who's like six, two and walks in the room, sometimes that aloof introverted guy is taken for a cocky <laughs> dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be like standing next to Chrissy and I'll like, or uh, Natalie and I'll like, I don't know, I'll be thinking something and, and, and they'll be like, you, you like did it again. And I'm like, I did fuck. And then it like <laughs> ruined my night. And I'll be like, I'll be like, oh, should I like reach, <laughs> like, should I reach out or should I? <laughs> oh like, my God. And I, I mean, that's been me my, since high school. Yeah. Uh, is there anything like that where you feel like uh, you it just, people take you for granted or you feel like you've been taken for granted by just people you've known in walks of life no like I really am just like 100% myself and I think that's what comes across when people are watching these episodes like I'm awkward I'm dorky I'm not like your typical like bachelorette and like people like make fun of me and I like I join them in on that like the way I walk for example like the first night like I walked very like power pose <laughs> did, did you notice that I don't there's a tiktok yeah. about it is there yeah, just like, I don't, okay, here's the thing. I didn't want to like put my arms flat on my body, but like I'm not a pageant girl, so I don't know like the cool way to walk, you know? But that's I've, the thing. I've never thought about it, to be honest. I don't, maybe should, I should have been. You should watch it. It's very like, I'm strutting in like aggressively. <laughs> but like I'm just 100% myself in these episodes and I really think that's coming through for people. And I think that's why people are like enjoying it because they see pieces of them in it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not like this cool girl. I'm a little awkward. I'm not like this elegant like pageant queen. Like I'm, I fucking suck at walking apparently. So uh, <laughs> there's just, I mean, I don't know. I think people are learning about me and um, that's like, I think what I'm most excited about. Other than um, walking funny as an insecurity <laughs> and being truly your authentic self uh, as a strength, what are, what's the something you really like about yourself and have a lot of confidence in and, and what's a, an insecurity you have about yourself that you constantly try to remind yourself yeah. So stop it. Um, I think the one thing I, I do enjoy about myself is I am very like loving and nurturing. And I think that comes across these episodes because I am really getting to know these guys. And that's what I think people are going to see is like I'm really opening up to all of them. I, I was never closed off, you know, no offense to Claire. But, you know, like I was very open to all these men the whole entire time, you know, and that's just my personality. I'm a good listener. I want to get to know them. I want to hear their stories, you know, when it comes to insecurities, um, I do feel like I don't fully know my worth sometimes. And so I feel like I like, I settle or I go for like a safe route sometimes. I'm like, oh, he's safer than like this guy who like really offers a lot, but like he's too good for me. And so that was something I think I've struggled with a lot. Um, 
but also why this was like a great opportunity of like, look, there's, you know, 30 plus guys here for you. Just own it, embrace it and have fun with it. Hmm. So you're in, you think you're too safe. Oh, you don't consider yourself a risk taker. Not when it comes to dating. It, like if you if all my guys were like lined up, you, you would be like, OK, first of all, there's no type here. You know, people think they know what my type is and you don't. What do you people think your type is? I mean, they just assume I'd be with us as like, I don't know, a 10 out of 10. And like, that sounds like just kind of like the guys I've dated before. But yeah, what do you mean? But I mean, that could be any of that. Could, well, mean, okay. On your type. The, the last guy like I dated, not in a serious relationship, but he was like this like scrawny Irish guy, uh-huh. like smaller pants than me and like glasses. And people would be like, you would never date that guy. I'm like, oh, he was the best sex I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> but then like why <laughs> why yeah i don't know this is great i don't know <laughs> what specifically we have a lot of people who call in and they are you know i get a lot of questions with questions with Nick. Oh we like i need to spice things up how do i do it what was he getting right there are people we have a great ma- male audience that like yeah. sometimes needs some notes and i'm just wondering if if there is a reason why specifically oh, was he a, was he a ginger he was a ginger the gingers will surprise you. Yeah. I'm telling Big you. Big dick energy, surprising. let me tell you. Is there any specific... <laughs> the gingers will surprise you. So they just have mass... They just really big dicks? He did it? have a big dick. Okay. But like, it yeah. was it was more than that. It was like he... <laughs> he communicated. Like, we like we were very much on the same page. He like took care of my needs first, which I think is very he's important. Very, he's a, I he feel was like a giver. He was present. Yeah. Gingers like have decent dicks, but they're also good emotionally. Like, yeah. they're really nice guys. Yeah. yeah. The ginger. It's a good combo. They don't get enough credit. Yeah. I I love a good ginger. <laughs> there you'll get no ginger hate from me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. What happened with the can we, can we I feel like we should also stop saying <laughs> the, ginger. Yeah. the ginger. No, I mean he was like this Irish guy. We were just very much on different pages in terms of like life goals, you know? Like I'm like again, I I date very seriously and if I can't see you as a husband, I'm not going to waste our time. And so like for me Vacation, for example. I love sitting by the beach, drinking, and just relaxing in the sun. He thought, like, fish were gross. He thought sand was gross. He doesn't know how to swim. I'm like, how are we supposed to go on vacation together? Like, this is going to suck. All you can do is fuck. What am I supposed to do with you? (laughs) I mean, it's not a bad thing, but, like, (laughs) come on. You're fucking useless if we're not having sex. (laughs) Describe to me the perfect gift you could receive from a partner. Ooh. I see. I'm not a materialistic thing. Like when I think of like the five I'm not love suggesting languages, that you are. Yeah. Um, like a vacate, like a memory, like a vacation, a memory, something that's like no one can take away from you. I guess. I love it that she was like, I'm not material. I don't need much. Well, <laughs> a vacation okay. would be nice. I know. Okay, that maybe like it's just like a memory I'm though. <laughs> you know what you. I'm saying? I'm like, I don't want like. No, that's a great answer. A jewelry. You or should clothes. expect a vacation. That's fine. I'm just giving you shit. Memories. I want memories. Uh, memories. Okay. Do you have a favorite uh, destination trip? Were you bummed that you couldn't travel? Not really. Really? I, I mean, I don't. I don't want to be blinded by like the excitement of like all these cool places, and and also like I've heard like the turnaround time from traveling to like filming again. Yeah, it's, like, that can a lot. suck, but the price. It's. it's a, I'm okay with it. I, I really price. am. Like, fall in love with me like on a picnic in New Mexico, sure. and not like in like Hawaii. I will say that the, the, I will agree 100% that the dates they're forced to have as a result of being stuck in one place is are ones better served to actually forming relationships than the ones that they often have that are just more, more fun to watch. Yeah. Um, back to like where you would want to travel or where you're going to maybe start traveling with your new fiance. Now that you're vaccinated and yeah. people are traveling and where would you like to go with anyone you would be potentially in a relationship with? I mean, it's tough because I, I, I don't want to, like, say too much. But, like, where, wherever. Like, we want to, if we want to. Well, we, there's a we. Well, I mean, if there is a where we. Where would you like to travel? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, I'm just happy to get out of the States, wherever, at this point. I've tried to, like, plan vacations several times in this last year with the pandemic, like, canceling my flights over and over again. All right. I offer, like, Katie, you can go anywhere in the <laughs> world, free trip, you're leaving tonight, where are you going? Hmm. Maybe Thailand. Thailand. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Just wanted to know. Yeah. I wanted to know. Look, I- I'm from Seattle, so like anywhere warm is like okay. Like you want to send me to like Mazatlan, Mexico? Fine, I'll go. Okay. I just want to get out in the the warmth. You like warmer climates? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Washington is like cold and rainy. So it's like any even even like Southern California sounds all right as a as a vacation for me. 
Okay. Um, you mentioned, I don't know if it was, I don't think it was last week or the week earlier on the show, uh, that you haven't really decided or, or, or at least okay with either in terms of having a child or not. Yeah. And I think that's, I don't know. I know it's been talked about a bit, but, uh, it's very unique in some of your position, a show that's traditionally been very conservative with people who have been casted and, and as someone who desperately wants to be a father, like I want to be a father. But as there are a lot of stigmas and pressures applied to, uh, you know, women in general for for being uh, for for like motherhood or what the expectation is. Yeah. And did you first of all, I think that was really cool that you said that and what you know, that you haven't decided is, is that something that was important for you to people to know? Do you feel a pressure or is that just a casual thing or, or you get what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I I think uh, society makes it a pressure for sure, but I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't fucking care. You know, like the world is kind of going to shit. So there is this contemplation of like, do I bring a child into this world that's like dying? Do I adopt because there's so many children who like need a home? Mm -hmm. Or do I just not have children and and use my time and energy to like make the world a better place for those future children, you know? And so for me, I'm just like kind of undecided, you know, like I'm not like, convinced one way or the other which is why like when i mentioned to michael a like Mm -hmm. he had a son i was like you know if michael was like oh i don't i don't want any more kids i have a son that's okay to me you know if someone's like i don't want kids that's also okay to me so i don't really lean one way or the other i think my passions are uh towards other things i think obviously being a mother it changes your perspective but that's not something i am so for me at this moment i'm just like Meh, whatever. That's great. How has the response been from from Bachelor Nation, or if if anything at all? Did you get people no, who noticed that as well? I know some of my friends, um, you know Emma and, and Claire. Mm-hmm. I know noticed it, and yeah. um, just have, how has the response been? I think people feel seen because there is this stigma of like, and I'll I'll be the first to admit, like I used to judge women who are like, I don't want kids, and you're like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know, like that's your goal, that's your purpose in life, you know. Mm-hmm. But the older I got, the more I was like fuck that like I have nieces and nephews I'm good you know and so I feel like um just being able to speak uh my truth and having these women feel like seen in their truth as well it was just kind of I didn't realize it in the moment until like you know going on Twitter people like yes that's me too you know that people are feeling the same way especially in this new era that we are in what is next for you i mean what are what are some of your goals what do you want to do with this platform it is a platform I know absolutely um and in a perfect world, what are some things that you would be interested in doing? Yeah, for me, I like it's such a, a powerful tool, right? And so you want to do good with it for me. And so like the one thing I've already started doing is after that, um, you know, group date where sexual assault was talked about, I actually started a Facebook group called Calm, which is creating a lovely masterpiece. And all these... Um, it's a Facebook group? It's a Facebook group, yeah. Should we repeat that again? Uh, C-A-L-M, so C dot A dot L dot M. And all these uh, men and women come forward and share their stories and kind of support each other. Um, so, you know, that's something that I've already started doing that I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm I'm putting back good energy into the world and making this world a, a better place, honestly. Um, the other thing I think is kind of unique is a lot of people have messaged me um, since obviously my entrance on Matt's season about like they've since purchased their first sex toy. And I'm like, I want to like make that a fun thing for women. Like I don't, or, or men, I don't want to be like this taboo thing. Like I want to make it like fun and exciting and encourage people to do that. Because if you think about it, think of like, I don't know, teen pregnancies going down, women having healthier relationships with themselves, their relationships by knowing what they like, what they don't. Um, and so ultimately it's just like doing better for the world, putting in a lot of positivity in the world in whatever way that I can. So maybe it's like a sex toy line. I don't know. I don't even know if it's a sex toy line or like a website that's like a survey that's like, take this, you know, fun. Like it's very fun and bright you're, and exciting. You're allowed to try to make money. No, I get that. But like, I don't like almost like, ref, like maybe referring them to like different toys, like based on the survey. Like I just wanted to be like inviting and fun and not like so like taboo and like dark. Like I want to be like a Cosmo survey. We're, yeah, we're a very sex positive toy. Sex toy positive. Toy positive. Sex, we're also sex positive. We love positive. toys. <laughs> so like I'm, not, I'm not trying to correct that. Yeah. Uh, we do get a lot of questions uh, on this podcast and on my questions with Nick uh, for women who are nervous or struggling with introducing a sex toy into the bedroom. Do you have any advice for the women out there? Uh, have you tried to suggest this in the bedroom with a guy someone who's sex toy positive and how would what advice would you give to women 
potentially do that with their partners? I think people build it up bigger than they should be. I think in their head, they're like, oh, this is going to be so awkward. He's going to be mad, whatever. But like, if you just have the conversation, it's not that big of a deal. You know, if anything, and correct me if I'm wrong, but these guys are like, yeah, anything that helps me like get you off, they're like excited to do, you know? Yeah, Uh, I agree. I mean, I think the biggest thing is, you know, men are, can be overly sensitive, you know, just compliment, just compliment guys all the time and yeah, let them know that it'll help them. I also think that if they act poorly, that might be a, a good indicator that they're, you shouldn't move forward with anything with them. I mean, oh, it's yeah. bad news to hear if you're married to the guy <laughs> and he's, but like that is, so, it, it would be a red flag. And even if you are, I would, I would suggest that even if you are married to this person, that's something you should not ignore and maybe address it in therapy or talk about because it's, you know, oh, it yeah. should be okay to have these conversations yeah. and relationships. I mean, the sexual experience is supposed to be fun for both partners, however you get there together. And that's the thing I think people need to remember is like, it's not about like, oh, you can't like satisfy me. It's just like, we are just partaking in this um, activity together, however we can enjoy it together. And that's just going to be healthier long-term than like, if he's so insecure, like, oh, you can only get off on this, like, you know, I don't know if I can say this, like cock ring, you know, then he's like, oh, I'm not into this, you know, but what's important is like enjoying an activity together, both being satisfied together. If you're doing it together, then like there shouldn't be a problem. Um, have you ever had your heart broken? Oh, a thousand times. A thousand? I mean, okay, that's, that's dramatic. But yeah, I've, of course I've had my heart broken. Uh, On this season, I've had my heart broken. Spoiler alert. Okay. The note. Time, note that, Chrissy, <laughs> you had your heart broken on this season. Oh, yeah. I think that's a profound statement. I don't know if every lead has, unless unless you're lying. Did you not see her in the super tees, I crying think, in the courtyard, uh, running away, I, saying, I, get my flight? It's I don't, very obvious. I, I don't, I don't put think a lot of stock in the super tees. Yeah. Uh, but I do put stock in Katie's word. <laughs> <laughs> the super tease, not so much. Yeah. But yeah, that's not nothing. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of sadness that leads have, and I think there's a lot. But so just to confirm. Yes. You felt legitimate heartbreak on this season. Your heart oh. was broken. You woke up the next day. Yes. And, and that we all know this feeling when our heart's broken of you wake up and for like a half a second you feel okay and then you realize how fucking shitty your existence is and your body swells up with anxiety (laughs) starting at your toes and you're just like fuck my heart is broken oh my god am i wrong if you've had your heart (laughs) broken you know exactly what i mean and you're fine and it's all like but you that's how you feel no i get it that's very intense and accurate but yes and you can you can that happen yes okay wow yeah, i know it's tough being the lead people don't realize that They're like did you have fun i'm like fuck no i didn't have fun so greg left and now she's with blake i i didn't say that <laughs> i'm just <laughs> this guy he's trying he's trying michael had to leave to go home to his kid michael I had mean, to leave to go home to his kid look i got great guys so you can only imagine like uh, sending these great guys home was very tough you do seem to have nice guys mm-hmm. i I, I said that for me watching it and having been there, Michael's the only one so far mm. that I can see that he is truly falling in love unexpectedly and he can't believe what's going on and, 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 and that's why he's touching his face and he's just <laughs> awkward and he's just like, this is fucking bizarre oh. and like, what is going on? And... So far, you know, Andrew S. and, and Greg, they all seem to really like you and, yeah. and, 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 and Connor. But Michael's the only one so far that I'm just like, and I'm like, I know that look, you know, mm-hmm. and, and he's just like, oh, what, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm wondering if, if you agree with that. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he has a kid. So like for him to choose to be there, he he really thinks it's worth it. He's there for me. He knows that every week he's spending with me is one week less with his his son, James. Um, So yeah, I think that's a fair statement for sure. Okay. Like what else like, do we want? He's like to know trying about to like Katie. analyze my face. Mm. Don't well, analyze that me. little. That you had a little grin there. Mm. Michael's like great. They're all great, honestly. Like I just I feel so blessed, honestly. Yeah, I you know someone who's been in her shoes like. 
I, I, I felt like so fondly of Rachel and Raven and, and Corinne. It's like you definitely form a bond. Yeah. Even with the people you don't pick. You, you, I just had like, an, like I went, you, you, again, you go through such a crazy experience that you're just like, we did this, you know, we all did this. It's trauma bonding yeah. in a way. 100%. Oh, <laughs> and it, it really is. And, and I, you know, for a lot of reasons, like I still like have a lot of respect for those women. And so yeah. I, 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 the grinning and, and, and thinking fondly of these guys, I, I totally get it. And it doesn't mean necessarily anything. Yeah. Maybe everything. No, who knows? Tune in Monday night. We'll find out. Amanda, <laughs> you had a question for Katie. Yeah. If one of your best friends was like, I pulled a Katie, what would they be talking about? Like, what would they have done? Oh, great question. Oh, God. Um, hmm. Maybe like made out with two guys in one night. <laughs> Honestly, that's called a Katie. I mean, that's like that rocks. Not like I did that that's one time. That's called a Tuesday. Oh, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's either that or like. Have you Amanda? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely no judgment. Amanda's like, please, amateur hour. <laughs> yeah, like. I Have you saying. dated two couples this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Let's go out. <laughs> The bars are open now, right? Let's go. Katie, let's go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, great question. Great answer. Better answer. Much better answer. Great question. Uh, at, uh, open open floor to questions for Katie. Another old faithful is what Halloween costume are you most proud of? Oh, let me tell you. It was a Tinkerbell costume, okay? And <gasps> it was like tulle with like built in like little lights. I made it myself and this cute little bra. But here's the thing. I want to tell you about this story. So I was supposed to go to like a like an EDM concert. So it was like the 31st and November 1st, like a two day thing. So I'm in my con or my uh, costume for November 1st of this concert. The concert gets canceled, but we're like, we've already like drank. We're like buzzing. We're in our costume. We're like, shit, what do we do? I'm like, let's go to a restaurant. So we go to like a Thai restaurant, like a family Thai restaurant. I'm in like a bra and a tutu walking in this Thai restaurant on November 1st. Drunk, don't give a shit. But it's honestly like my favorite costume. I never got to even like wear it out except to this Thai restaurant. <laughs> I love it. I have a Peter Pan tattoo, so I love oh, all things Peter Pan. Yes. Do you have any tattoos? No tattoos. I fucking hate needles or COVID tests. <laughs> Is EDM your music of choice? No, like early on it was, but like I also don't do drugs and I think you have to like do drugs to fully enjoy like an <laughs> yeah. EDM concert. And so like that's why I went like one of the two nights because like I'll drink coffee and like see if I can hang. But what's your drink of choice? I mean, I'm drinking like whiskey, whiskey yeah. on the rocks right now. It just depends. Like I'm a little bit of everything. Alcohol is a drug. I, I mean, that's true. That's fair. I just think it's important for people to know that. That's fair. For anyone who wants to drudge. I'll give you that. Any participation in other types of I, substances. I'm all for it. Like Washington, like, oh, marijuana is like legal. So like, you know, whatever. It's Do all. you believe in girl code? That's a good question. Um, are, are, yeah. Do you think you're a girl's girl or a guy's girl? Mm. I think I definitely get along with guys more, but I definitely believe in girl code. What's girl code, yeah. Kersey? Well, girl code is like if your best friend is dating someone, you don't, I and mean, we get these calls all the time. Yeah. You don't like go out with your best friend's like ex mm -hmm. kind of thing, or you don't like hook up with like one of your friend's other guys while they're dating them. You know, just like, well, yeah. isn't that like person code. people code? Well, it's like <laughs> it is, but like it's like female specific, it, like, like within code. female community. Like, what is your obligation to other women, particularly yeah. those who you are, like who are close in your life? To be fair, I did tell I won't say like the names, but some women who uh, may or may not be on Paradise, like fair game, go for it with my yeah, exes. Because they asked. <laughs> Yeah, Which I'm like, like girl they, code. Go for it. Wait, you you don't think that they actually have to ask? And thank you for clarifying. <laughs> no, Katie, like, they don't have but, to. But that's like a girl just being like, you know, it's a good conversation. Go like Tasia being like, go for it. All of the guys are like, maybe like the guy who who's like fourth runner up. Like probably mm -hmm. like like I would like say Connor B. I mean, I will say I think there are like a few that I'm like probably off limits for like twelve months. Do you think, is, is sex going to be a, that big of a conversation on your season going f forward? I, I, I want to, before you answer, I'm going to guess <laughs> no, because it's usually the other opposite. It's, they don't make sex a big part of the conversation when people are more comfortable talking about sex. It's more when you're a virgin. And I don't think Mike's going to be your top three. Uh, Mike might surprise you. Mike might surprise That's me. That's all I'm going to say to that. But... <laughs> Her face. Magic hey, Mike. Man. Hey. I mean that 
I, he's just I, waiting for marriage. If we uh, get engaged, I mean, he I be like he will be well, like <laughs> such a giver. Oh yes. He also is going to come <laughs> with great expectations, and he's 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 been like saving up for someone. Oh. So look, just because he hasn't had sex doesn't mean he hasn't done other things. That's all I'm going to say to that. Mike has been well, and Mike is a baseball player, so he's he gets a lot of triples. I mean, he's he's done some things. I can't. With this that I know. Analogy. I can't believe you just said that. This you know or this you Oh, no, I do. I just, I know. I'm not, I, I'm not confirming or denying that I experienced it, but I do know. You saw him eat that Twinkie and you were just like, something about it. Twitter blew up over that. I can't even like quote some of the things they said. Completely. I mean, the guy doesn't eat carbs or have sex and I'm just wondering. He's a gym how owner. Does he get, He's hot. How does he have fun? I don't, he is a good looking guy. He's hot. Who, who are your four hottest guys oh my god i can't i don't they're all like really hot but you Do walk you, into a bar oh it's god. friday night okay. you're not on the bachelorette okay yeah you you're like three yeah whiskeys deep mm-hmm. who other than thomas because like let's be yeah. honest whatever you think about thomas total bit so not thomas okay because thomas was gonna be like the obvious choice for yeah. me <laughs> he has like huge hands no it, the guy, <laughs> like i hello <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, you can't deny his yeah, sexual yeah. appeal. You have to mm-hmm. give him credit. Okay. Uh, but of the men who are left, mm. or or other than Thomas, I'll leave it other okay. than Thomas. Yeah, cause, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, Andrew S. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will say Michael A. is like this like underdog that Michael I think. Michael A. The dad. Oh, Mike. Well, oh no, Michael. Michael no, A. Sorry. Michael. Michael. I, it's just the A threw me off. I say Michael A. Dad. Mike. Mike okay. P. Mike Penis hasn't been. He used. grew a beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael A. is from Ohio. Okay, but he grew a beard. Uh, yeah. See, that's that's yeah. the difference. Game changer for him. Like the first night, like clean shaven, I was like, he's cute. But then, like the beard, I was like, damn, daddy. Okay. Did you okay. think that? Did you think that way about uh, Matt's beard? I don't even know what to say about Matt's beard right now. It's it needs some help. Curious. There's like things hiding in it. I feel like on it, it's like it needs to be like some shaped something. It's nasty. I have I'm no just gonna comment. say I'm just yeah. I'm just. Saying, but on Michael, nasty. the beard's hot. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen. I, I I noticed this episode. It seems he's like ah fuck it. I'm gonna grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like it's a very serious beard. Michael can grow a beard. That yeah. might that's like a five. Like I think Michael has like a real thick beard. Yeah. Um, it seems I, like. I never saw it the way it is now. But like on the show, it's like that five o'clock shadow look. It's like. Guys, do we think she's avoiding mentioning Greg? Like how no, hot I, he I is? Was, I wasn't done. I, I said two people. I was going to say Greg and Blake as well. Like. But I wonder like this, how calculated she was with her order. I mean, you're overthinking it. Just like, How about just like Twitter does. Everyone overthinks about everything. Tall people. Well, yeah. Do you, Listen, do Katie, you I prefer the talking. talls. I people? mean, Thomas was like very tall, and it was like it was yeah. nice to just feel like this little like. I, I say, do you like? Do you that like that? Yeah. Is it like some shorter women like the really tall men? And you're, you're I'm like five can I call three. You, can I call you short? Yeah, I totally. Yeah. I am. <laughs> sure. Okay, I, I, you know, at this point, I don't know. Yeah. What I can say. Like, uh, not to be like TMI, but, do but like. you like tall men? Yeah, like a guy can like pick you up and it's like, you know, like yeah. you feel small. You feel like he can like. Greg doesn't look own that you? tall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how tall Greg is, to be honest. Let me think about it. I don't know. Yeah. He's no, he's no Thomas, that's for sure. That wasn't shade. That's just Thomas is just like a giant. A giant. I was wearing heels who, on this last who, episode. Who, to be clear, you think people should be warned about uh, Thomas? I mean, yeah. Like he's hot, but like red flags everywhere. But like if he's in a Calvin Klein ad, we, that's fine. Like buy the underwear, <laughs> sure. But like, I fuck saw, him, sure. I, don't marry him, though. Don't take it off of him. <laughs> I'm, I'm predicting a Thomas redemption story in Paris. Uh, you could have a Calvin ad that's like, I'm shitty to Trey in my Calvins. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point out, one, one, I'm just, not to belabor a point, but Thomas was the only one who didn't lie last episode, but he might still be a shitty. I mean, I think it was just all in his like delivery. He made Again, it sound like he's he came... definitely doesn't do himself any favors yeah. by saying things he does. Like he's like I said, he's trying to s- sound how Michael feels authentically. Yeah, I I don't know Thomas. I just if if he ends up on Paradise, whoever he's with, like good luck, girl. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, <laughs> I'll remember that. I'm sure he'll be there. Can you promise me you will tweet it? Good luck, oh, girl. A thousand percent. <laughs> I have no filter. Have we not I, no, learned I, this yet? I appreciate it. I just. <laughs> I 
cool. When you tweet it, I'm uh, like, you heard it here first. Yeah. Um, do we have any other questions before we get into Do You Know Me with Katie? No, I'm excited for Do You Know Me. I'm All scared. Right. Katie, I, I want to thank you so far for your honesty thank and authenticity. You. It's been a really fun and delightful interview. Thank and And um, as, as I think of you as the bachelorette, you've been a fantastic interview, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to play one little game with you before we let you go, if that's okay. Oh, God, okay. It's real simple. It's <laughs> called Do You Know Me? We're going to guess if we know Katie. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question. Does Katie this? Has Katie ever done that? Mm -hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to guess. Okay. And then you're going to tell us who's right. Mm. Simple yes or no's. Okay. All right. Fine. Uh, anecdotal stories are welcomed. Okay. But not expected. I'm here for it. Question number one. Has Katie ever changed a flat tire? Heck yeah. I believe she can. I believe she'd be willing to face the challenge. The question is, has she? Because she might like be more than fine pumping her gas. But like, if someone wants to pump her gas, would she yeah. let them pump her gas? But her dad did so many outdoor things. Like, I feel like her dad probably taught her about, like, changing her tire. And, like, I bet her dad had her covered. I bet she's done it. No, I'm going to say she has. Okay. I'm going to say no, because there's no shame in not having done it. All, yeah, there's no shame. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I feel like she can, but, like, do people usually get flat tires? Is that, like, a thing that happens? I've experienced such an event. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't... In New cars over here. I know you just graduated from college and like you got a great parents and all, but like. I'm just like, do, do people drive down the road and suddenly there's a flat tire? I've just never experienced it. Oh, it happened. Yes. Oh, okay. It's so Allie. scary. I don't know. Maybe it's like something in the movies. <laughs> Allie is looking at Amanda <laughs> with such. I mean, you both have your highs and lows on the show, but like, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a low for Allie. <laughs> My answer now? Uh, yeah, so yes, you have. Yes, you have. No, and she doesn't even believe it's in a thing. <laughs> flat tires don't exist. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't experienced a flat tire. Therefore, I have not had to change a flat tire. Mm -hmm. Katie and I will be hanging out after this. No one else is invited. <laughs> yeah, Thank but you. that wasn't what you said. Um, I should have gone with my gut. <laughs> I want honesty here. Oh, God. Has Katie ever muted... Mm. one of their friends on Instagram or Twitter without their knowledge, I'm going to add, hmm. or with their knowledge. But have you ever muted one of your friends because you're just like, oh, you fucking are so annoying, but like, I don't want to deal with the hassle of unfollowing you. Yes. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like everyone has. Absolutely. Do Who? what you got to do for your mental health. Yeah. Mute those people. Who? I can't say her name. Is it <laughs> Becky? <laughs> We've got it in half. We know it's a girl. No, there's one that came to mind. I was like, I can't uh, handle. You are too much. She's a great girl. Has Katie given someone in the middle finger in the last two weeks? No. No. Yes. A casual middle finger. Two, she's done it for sure. But yeah. two weeks... Yeah. I'm going with yes. Mm. I'm going with yes. I have not. Mm. I don't believe in the middle finger. Look, I'm like a public figure now. I have to be like extra polite. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone sees me flipping them off, like it'll like make all the fucking media yeah, outlets. <laughs> Katie's a bitch. She flipped me off and everyone will pick it up. I can't. You can do, what is it? It's the Israel. title of this episode they do will this. be, I'm a public figure <laughs> yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it's very different. Like everyone's like watching you under a microscope. Uh, <laughs> Does Katie know the rules of chess? No. Yes. Yeah. I mean all the rules. And I, I don't. I'm going to go with all the rules? she was taught them when she was little and she's kind of forgot them If now. I was a chess player, could I sit down with Katie and be like, let's play some chess? She'd be like, great, let's play. And we would just play. Yeah. I'm going to say no. I also want to point out it's okay to not know. You're saying it's yeah. like... We're not shaming. How could you shaming. say that about her? Like women in STEM. What are you saying? Women she can't play chess, play chess and they only play checkers? <laughs> um, you're right. I know nothing about chess, but I know everything about poker. Okay. Great. Chess is so boring. I, I mean, Queen's Gambit, great show. I haven't watched it. I hear it's fantastic. You haven't watched though. it? You should. I know. Yeah. <sighs> oh, I'm scared. 
scared. Yeah. Look at his face. Has Katie ever given a lap dance? Well done. I mean, Amanda picked these questions, uh, not me. Nick, whenever there's a sexual one, he always be. I think it's just very important me. with certain guests that I point out that I didn't but fucking select yeah. these. Okay, totally. It's just very important. Um, needless to say, have you? Uh, we don't guess. I Given, just answer. Oh, uh, <laughs> you want me to go straight to the answer? Yeah. Yeah, on some form to a Fun. boyfriend in a private yeah. setting. Yeah, and playful. I'm going to say no. Like a full on lap dance, no. Well, she could have given a friend did a lap she have dance. To yeah, like spe- I was going to say, like, to a girlfriend as a joke. Like, did who- she have to receive any currency to make it a lap dance? No. Oh, God, no. I wish. Other <laughs> than joy. <laughs> like, a pregame on your sister? Yeah, yeah that's like shit that happens. Out? That's yeah, different. exactly. Like, Chrissy and I went right Because if you're, like, dating zone. someone and they walk up to you and they're like, hey, and you're like, is that a oh, lap wait, dance? Wait, can you do that again, please? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> is Natalie here yet? <laughs> that, was, that was very Chandler of you. It was very cute. <laughs> um, also, the answer is no. I'm, like, a horrible dancer. So, like, the sex appeal drops if I try to do that. I, really so I just don't. <laughs> what did I say? No. Uh, I don't. I was too distracted by your like. So you're a Chandler dancer and she's an Elaine dancer. Yeah, that would be fun. Actually, I've been called out for an Elaine dancer before, so (laughs) this isn't the first time I've heard this. Yeah. Yes. Can Katie name four countries in Africa? Uh. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. (laughs) That's a no. I think you can do it. My first thought was I can't, but I know I can. It's so easy. It's four. Give it a shot. I believe in you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's it's, start with an easy, easy one. It's easy. Yeah. I actually have to. I thought it was like a yes or no. Because <laughs> I just want to say no. No, you have to try. Oh, my you God. You can do this. Okay. I know you can. Oh, my God. This is. This Let's is go where, with the obvious one. This is where I drop. Uh, it's the obvious. One. Okay. Don't don't judge me. No, I'm. South Africa. Great. Okay. Ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. We got one. Well done. <laughs> All right. Now you got some confidence going. Oh, shit. There's I'm... a popular Disney show named after another one. It's a movie. It's a movie. Little animals. Pyramids. Uh, That's a different answer, but yeah. also, yes. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure. Nick and I are on the same page with yeah, the movie. Allie and I yeah. know what we're talking about. <laughs> I, like, hate this right now. Like, Anyone? Did you ever watch Carmen San Diego or am I dating myself? Uh, you're yes, dating myself? I loved Carmen San Diego. <laughs> well, <Same age>, maybe. <laughs> uh, but you're that the person bit. older than you said that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my, I just, I, oh my, I can't. I don't want to do this. Okay. Madagascar, Egypt, Sudan, Kenya, Congo, Algeria. My mind is blown right now. Here's the thing. I'm very sheltered in my Washington life for the last 30 years. I need to get out more. All right. I'm sorry. She, she's got to get no. out of the U.S., guys. She you said just, it. She's you... got to leave. <laughs> I'm trying to explore Africa and find all these countries. You need to go to YouTube and uh, uh, Google Carmen. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? San Diego. Oh yeah. So good. <laughs> Geography not my forte. Can Katie recite a poem? Mm. It was worth the ask, just in case you could. Um, no. I'm gonna say no. I think a short one. I feel like she could rap like a boss. Like we'd give her like a rap. Row, row, I, row, I, I, I would agree. Yeah, I bet. Like, get her a bridge to something. Like, could you have rap her go a, at it. Is there a, do you have a favorite rap karaoke song? I mean, and we're no, we're right on the no poem. I, okay, I can't recite like a popular poem, but I am poetic, which I will say you might see in upcoming episodes. Um, so yeah. I don't, I don't That's a great tease. Not as good as you've had your heart broken. I, okay. <laughs> that was just very obvious in the teaser, but like Edgar Allan Poe, like he's coming up. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, you little raven. <laughs> <laughs> I was not a crow. No. Uh, all right. Like, one like, more. They're like the same thing. One more. Blackbirds. <laughs> Feathers. Same. Has Katie ever cut her own hair? I think as a child, yes. you definitely at some point tried. Mm. Yes. We all like did Every something to our hair during right? quarantine. I oh. feel like, yeah. Yeah. Like the bangs always. Yeah. The bangs no. are a, a thing. What's Cut your own bangs. What's one fashion thing? You asked me about fashion? But a- anything that like, was a tattoo or something where you're just like, I'm probably never going to do this, but like rebellious me, like I've imagined me like, going to this event or doing this crazy thing. And if you had like an alter ego, like what would that look like? Oh man. Okay. I will say I did a photo shoot the other week where Uh it was like, I was like, do whatever you want. Like just, I'm your subject. And it was very like 
bright neons, like swimsuit, lime green, like jacket. I haven't posted them yet, but I'm really excited. But I'm like, I'm such a plain Jane. I really am. I'm like your very average, like brunette girl, which is why I don't think I get noticed in public. And so um, just anything that's just like, I don't know, cool. <laughs> anything fashionable is not me. So I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> Last question and then we'll let you go. What yeah. are five movies? It's popular on Twitter. What are five movies you're confident you've seen at least 10 times? Oh, Lion King. For sure. Oh, the animated or the... Re- animated. Okay. The remake is bullshit. But no idea about Africa. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite movie, though. Okay. Um, the Help. Mean Girls. Um, Aladdin. A lot of kid Dude, movies Disney here. Disney star. Yeah. I know. I know. I'm trying to think of like... Um, Do you have your... Uh, oh, baby super sisters. bad. Super bad, definitely. Oh, super bad. Yeah. Those are just the first five that came to mind. That's when you know it's a good movie, though, is when you've seen it more yeah. than once. Maybe more than three times. You're like, it's that's always, a good you movie. You can learn a little bit about a person with their movies. Uh, Katie, it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. Uh, thank you so much thank for, you. for being uh, uh, so honest about who you are in this season. Um, any parting thoughts or words you want to share with your with the, our audience and, about what we can expect, learn, or really anything? The floor is yours. I mean expect the unexpected honestly like it's it's gonna be a a wild ride for sure do you think we'll cry you know the emotional episodes were pretty early on so i don't know that they're gonna be as intense as they have been but you might happy tears do you think there's any other villains to reveal (laughs) themselves absolutely more than one let me like gotta think it through it, guys. Anyone worse than Thomas? Yes. <sighs> yep. He's there. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like Hunter? The air got sucked out of all three of you at <laughs> once. So there's funny. all there's always He a- literally was just like no one listening date Thomas and someone's Look. worse than Thomas. Look, I try and to get rid of the villains. Like, <gasps> <laughs> I try, I try to get rid of them. Boom, boom, boom. Go. And then they just like keep reappearing. So there's there's always a villain. It's like a whack-a-mole. Mm-hmm. It just Ex- keeps popping up. Exactly. <laughs> I can't escape it. All right. Smile for my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's a video. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, the, you're fine with that. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Katie, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Uh, Congrats. Good luck. Whatever you uh, you, uh, deserve. We really have been having fun watching you. And um, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, We do appreciate you tuning in. Again, uh, if uh, you're new to this uh, show, be sure to check out our our Monday Ask Nicks, our Tuesday Recaps. And uh, subscribe. Five star reviews are always appreciated. Other than that, uh, what what's next week? Oh, I'm I'm also like recapping the Bachelor with my girlfriend Natalie. I don't know if that's interesting to anyone, but um, yeah. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>